Okay. Um, API 2 uh, using APIs for data exchange. So we're basically using JSON data again today and uh, we are grabbing that JSON data from external sites or sources. Let's see here. Overly massive effects. Good. Um, the learning objective for today is uh, that you have acquired the skill needed to apply key tools and data to optimize digital media production. And uh, there is a small amount of reading for you, uh, some best practices um, in, sorry, um, uh, page uh, 513 to so page 515 in the Pro HTML5 uh, book. So um, the agenda for today is to figure out what an API is. Um, what uh, we, we have two types of APIs uh, that we will go through, uh, REST and SOAP. And we'll have a look at AJAX and see what AJAX is and doing a couple of examples of uh, AJAX. Uh, first off, what is an API? Um, well, API is short for Application Programming Interface uh, and an API for a website is uh, code that is allowed, sorry, that allows uh, two software programs to communicate with each other. So we have uh, the website, the browser, uh, who talks to a server uh, which feeds it uh, with information. So those are the two programs. Um, also, uh, an API usually have a documentation that spells out uh, how to use it in, in the proper way for, uh, for us developers. So we get a defined set of rules for how to request information, which is good. And um, an API is a set of uh, public methods um, to send and retrieve data uh, from a program, server or app. Uh, basically, we ask for data and we receive data in the browser. Uh, we don't know how the data is uh, processed in the program server or app and we actually don't care. We just want to get the data that we're asking for. Uh, we get a data set that we can predict. We know which key value pairs are present or what we can ask for. Uh, and this means that we can uh, traverse through that data set and pick the data that we want to use. So in a schematic form, what we're doing here is that we have the client, us, uh, which are using, uh, sorry, uh, not us, the user, is uh, using a web browser, uh, which is uh, the client in this case. And um, that web browser is contacting a server uh, where our website is, so they enter the address uh, for the URL and they go into the website. Uh, the server then accepts this request and sends information back, uh, where the, um, the client will show that information. What happens uh, when we use APIs is that we usually contact uh, another server as well, or it could be the same server, but usually it's another server, where we, uh, where the browser and whatever was sent back from the website uh, is requesting more information from another server through an API. Um, so we get, uh, in this case, uh, as you can see, we have, uh, first of all, we have the HTML document that comes back and then that document gets uh, populated by whatever was in the API. Sort of like we did in API, API 1 where we had the JSON object and we populated uh, the HTML document with information. But in that case we just had that uh, JSON data locally in the JavaScript file. Ooh, sorry. Uh, 
Um, when talking about API and content, uh, we can get the entire content of the web page or app from one or more APIs. So we can ask several APIs for content if we want to. Um, or we can have partial uh, content. Usually if you use Google Maps API for instance, you will have partial content of the website based on an API. So that's kind of how, how that works. Um, yeah, examples for partial content uh, could be weather information for your location or today's menu in the cafeteria or which alarms has Thomas set on his Google Home. Who knows what he's doing with that. So, yeah. Um, and we have, uh, let's see, I'll just make myself almost disappear here. Um, we have the two examples of RESTful API and SOAP. Um, SOAP is a simple object access protocol and uh, RESTful API is, is also an acronym, but I, for the life of me, can't remember what it stands for right now. Anyways, uh, I have these two uh, in two separate columns and we can, we'll go through some of the differences between them. Uh, a RESTful API uses uh, HTTP, the HTTP protocol, whereas SOAP can use HTTP, SMTP, TCP or UDP, uh, which are all protocols as well. Um, you have no use for this right now, but you need to know that uh, there can be different protocols in use for SOAP. Um, a RESTful API is usually flexible. Uh, uh, the architectural style uh, has loose guidelines and recommendations. The feedback is usually text, JSON, HTML or uh, XML or um, format similar to that. Uh, whereas uh, the SOAP protocol is uh, rigid, it has a standardized protocol with uh, predefined rules to follow. Um, yes, uh, for RESTful API, uh, RESTful API is uh, stateless and that is SOAP is as well. Uh, each uh, call is uh, unique. Um, when you code, you m can't presume that the next call that you make will serve the same data. So you should always, when you write your code, uh, assume that th the response is a new data set. So you can't build on what you got uh, the last time you asked. Um, um, for SOAP, uh, SOAP is also stateless, uh, but that's just the default. Uh, it's possible to make SOAP, uh, a SOAP API uh, stateful, which means that it you can depend on the data from earlier on. Um, yeah. Because um, the calls are stateless. Uh, REST is uh, useful in uh, cloud applications and uh, stateless components can freely uh, be redeployed if something fails and they can scale to accommodate load changes. So if you have uh, varying loads on the website you can, you can scale it with the stateless behavior. Um, this is because any request can be directed to any instance of a component, um, which means that any request in a stateless API uh, can be made to any server that has that API. So you can just scale this up to any amount of servers that you want. So, so you have the, the power enough power to, to serve who, uh, whomever asks for information. Um, yeah, but remember that when you, you are using a stateless uh, service as we're doing here, we can't save any information because we don't know if the next information bit will be the same. So I can't, if I load a profile using a stateless API, for a user, uh, I, I can't rely on the username to be the same the next time I 
I load that I load anything from that profile so I can't just grab bits and pieces I need to get the entire object uh, of that user and then make sure that I'm using all of the information each time um, yes uh, by the way, uh, HTTP, SMTP, TCP, and UDP are, uh, of course, uh, hypertext transfer protocol, a simple mail transfer protocol, and uh, TCP is transmission control protocol, and uh, UDP is user datagram protocol, just so that you know. Um, Yes, what are the advantages of the different uh, types of uh, APIs? Uh, if we th look at RESTful, uh, one of the advantages is that it uh, is scalable, uh, really scalable. It has uh, better performance, so it answers more quickly usually if it's well written. It is uh, browser friendly, it's easy to work with, uh, and it's flexible. Whereas uh, SOAP, has some advantages as well. Uh, it has uh, high security. It's uh, more locked down uh, compared to to the RESTful API. It is uh, standardized and you can extend on it. So it it is uh, yeah. It's it's more standardized. It's it's more of a industry solution thingy, whereas. Uh, RESTful API is uh, more flexible, which is useful for fast-changing business and websites. Uh, and then, of course, the disadvantages are kind of the opposites. So a disadvantage with the RESTful API is uh, it has less security built into it, uh, whereas the disadvantages for SOAP is, of course, the, the opposite of the advantages for RESTful API, which is uh, for SOAP's case, uh, the disadvantage is uh, poorer performance, more complexity, and less flexibility. Uh, when you use APIs, uh, you need to have uh, keys uh, to um, to usually you need a key to to get data from an API and that is to limit the amount of uh, requests that are made to it. If, if everyone can use an API, then it might get overburdened by, by requests. Um, most APIs require a key if they are public. Um, and as I state here, it's uh, to set limits and use it so that everyone no, don't use it at once, for instance, uh, or uh, yeah, you, you get my point. Uh, you can uh, use API keys as a security measure if the data isn't for the public, so you can just hand out keys to those who are allowed to use it. Uh, and we are going to uh, use uh, the, the NASA API today, and uh, we will require a key uh, because they use keys to restrict usage. Um, for documentation, some APIs are not documented or documented very scarcely, uh, but uh, most of them are well documented. Uh, usually there's documentation online if the API is public. Sometimes it's offline in, in, in documents that you get handed out from, from the API supplier if you have a, an, a, a contract with them or whatever. But documentation is always useful, especially if you need to contact it by using keys and stuff like that. It's, it's you guessing how to use a key is is not fun. Um, we can have a quick look at uh, the NASA API um, to see how that is uh, how that works. Let's see. This is not working well for me. Let's just find it here, Chrome, API, NASA.gov. Funnily enough, that's one of the first ones here. And uh, what you can do is you can get a key, generate API key, um, where you fill in your name, your last name, your email address, 
and you can if you wanted to put in an application URL that's just for the the files right mm -hmm. um, but if you enter your name and last name and uh, email address you will be sent an email with a key that is a combination of letters and numbers uh, that you have to paste into your code if you lose this key you'll have to email NASA to get a new one um, ju so just save the email that you receive when you when you sign up for the API key um, so go to API NASA.gov and uh, get yourself an API key and uh, please remember don't upload keys to github where it's public if you if you have anything on github you'll need uh, the key that you receive for our next subject so uh, pause the video and go and do that Yes, um, the way we use AJAX is we use the XML HTTP request. Um, and the syntax for that is we create a variable, whatever we want to call it, I call it X HTTP, and uh, set that to be equal to a new XML HTTP request. So we have an object of the type XML HTTP request uh, in our variable X XHTTP. And uh, this variable, which is then an object of the type X XML HTTP request, uh, we can uh, use the open uh, method for that, um, where we set uh, the method f uh, to get, it's a string, and we use a comma to separate, and then we have the URL, uh, in this case user underscore info dot ASPX, it could be whatever you want it to be. Uh, but it is the URL for th where the API is located. And then we set a boolean, true or false, whether it should be asynchronous or not. Um, and then after we are ri like writing the address on the envelope, as we do with the open, uh, then we actually mail the, the letter uh, in the mailbox by using send. Um, You may get a cached response when you're using APIs. Uh, the way you can, uh, one way to avoid this is to actually add something to the URL, which is random, so that um, so that the address changes. Because caches on servers usually work on on the notion that when you request a certain address and the server puts puts something together to answer you, then it saves that answer in case that same address is requested later. Um, and it does this for uh, an, an amount of time, a certain set amount of time, depending on the server setup. But if you keep requesting different addresses by putting in a random number in the URL, then it won't use the cached response. Just a tip. Um, yes, uh, the get, uh, if we send specific information with a get request here, uh, well we can send specific information with a get request. Um, you can see here we are adding f name equals Henry and ln name equals Ford. So we can put something uh, like uh, search terms or whatever inside of the URL when we send it to the API, if we need to send any parameters with it. And uh, yeah, that's how we do that there. And when we sent our requests, the, the order of the code is a bit confusing, confusing because uh, here I'm setting an on ready state change, which actually listens for change in the state of the X HTTP object, which is an XML HTTP request object. But I'm setting up on ready stage change here to listen for any state, state changes. 
Um, and when I've done that, I write on the envelope and then I send the letter, right? Um, so what on ready state change does is then it listens for any state changes for the object. Uh, and I have a table of states afterwards and of statuses, but in this case uh, we can see there is an if sentence that says uh, if this ready state change is equal to 4 and this status is equal to 200, then we're good to go and I'll explain why in a second. Then uh, then when we're good to go, we take we find our element, change the NIHTML with the, the response text of this. And this, in this case, refers to the XHTTP object. So when we write this here, we actually are referring to this object. Well, let's see, uh, this ready state 4 and status 200, uh, we have some a table with the information about this. And here we go. Uh, ready state, we define a function called when ready state property changes, properties changes. The status, as you can see here, is the status of the XML HTTP request. If status is 0, then the request is not initialized. If it's 1, then the server connection is established, which means that we have asked the server for something and it has responded with a, hey, I know the, you're there. Um, 2, status 2, uh, that means that the server has uh, received the request. 3, is processing the request, so the server is working on it. And four, the request is finished and response is ready. So the response is ready. And uh, when status text changes, let's go back here. We have uh, status here and state here, right? So status, uh, when that is uh, changed to 200, that means that we're OK. We have received the file back, because we're sending files back and forth when we're using an API. So we have actually received a file back with the with the response that we're looking for. Uh, examples of uh, status is uh, 200, uh, 403, which is forbidden, which means that you usually have to log in to be there. And 404, which is page not found, which is probably the one that you're used to seeing. But 200 means that uh, we're good to go, we've got an answer. All right, um, so if we look at this again, we can see that when this ready state is equal to four, uh, and this in this case is the, this again, is the XML HTTP request object that is put inside of the X HTTP variable. So when this ready state change is equal to four, let's go back, equal to four, request finished and response is ready, and this status is equal to 200. So the, respo the response is ready and we've gotten a file back. Then we do something. In this case, we set a, we use, we change document and we use query selector and find uh, an element with the ID out output. And then we change the inner HTML to be equal to the response text that is in this. And this again is the eight X HTTP uh, variable, which is the XML H HTTP request. Blah. Sorry. All right. So um, let's find some uh, examples and uh, do some code along. Um, download uh, the zip file from today's lecture on Canvas. Unpack it somewhere you want to keep the files. Um, open the entire folder in uh, in um, in Visual Studio Code and open index.html in a browser and then make sure to open script.js in uh, an editor. Um, pause this video and uh, continue when you are when you're done with setting this setting this up. Hello. Um, yes, um, your API key from NASA. Uh, put that in instead of the demo key. Uh, string value here. Um, yes. Uh, 
and then we're good to go with the NASA part. Um, first of all, we um, need to let, let's write a function that does this so that we can call upon it when we need to. So uh, function get data from NASA um, and Again, this function can have any name we want. Get data from NASA is just meaningful to me. And then we'll set a new constant uh, to be xhttp, um, and that uh, we will make a new object of the type XML HTTP request. There we go. And uh, then we need to set the on ready state change, and we need to open it, and we need to send it. Um, so we're basically on ready state change. We're telling it what to do when it gets the answers back. Um, open is uh, writing the address on the envelope, and send is putting the envelope inside of the mailbox. So let's start out with uh, the on ready state change. Uh, we set that to be equal to a function, so that we have room for code here. And uh, inside of this function, we need to check if if the server is done compiling our our result, and that we have received that result. So we'll say uh, if uh, this, which is uh, the xhttp object right now. So if this uh, dot uh, ready state is equal to four, and uh, this dot status is equal to two hundred, four is uh, the server is done, the response is ready, and two hundred is uh, I have received the file. That's the browser. That's uh, that's uh, telling us that. So we now have a, a response back, so what to do with this? Um, in our case let's just create a constant uh, constant data and we'll set that to be equal to the response. So this response text um, if we do this uh, data will be a string value but we would l like it to be a JSON object instead. So we can do this by telling it to use a JSON, a JSON library of methods here. Uh, JSON pass uh, is a method where we look at a text string and see if we can interpret it as a JSON object. Um, so in this way we should have a, a variable called data with a JSON object uh, that consist of the response that we get back. We can uh, console log this uh, just to see if it works. But we haven't actually asked uh, the NASA server anything yet, uh, so we need to do that. We need to create the xhttp open and we need to create the xhttp send for it to work. So xhttp open uh, here we set the method for the request and we set the URL which is uh, basically this plus this with API key in between. So we can use axangavs and combine it because it's just a string that we need to put in here. So dollar sign curly brackets there's a URL and then we need to have uh, the question mark because now we have a parameter in the URL and they want us to write API key is equal to and then we'll take our next variable which is the key so we can put in uh, NASA key here so now we've uh, written on the envelope that we wanted to use the method get and the address of it and we want it to be asynchronous Alright, the next bit is actually sending the envelope. So xhttp.send That should do it. So, we're off. Um, 
nothing is triggering this function right now, so maybe we should do that. So if we write uh, get data from NASA here, and uh, we're triggering the function when we get to it. Uh, this can be uh, above the function, that doesn't matter. Uh, the browser will read all of the code first and then start executing it. So it will know that that there is a function called get data at NASA even though we are triggering it before it shows up in the code. But let's see uh, let's see what happens. I need to find a browser for this. So let's find one open in default browser. I'm not using live server because that gives a lot of requests um, and we don't want to do that in uh, with APIs. So right now nothing shows up and that's all right. We haven't begun to output anything to the HTML, we want something to happen in console. So if we look at console, right now there's an object. That object uh, has some information, it has copyright, date, expl explanation, HD URL, uh, media type, service version, title URL. So the URL is uh, actually the information that we need to show an image. Uh, HD URL is the HD version of that image. So let's see here. Uh, if we want to output this, we can do it here. Um, but I like to clean up my code a bit, so I'll I'll create a function that outputs it. So we can uh, create a function called render NASA uh, and give it the data. And that function we'll put down here. Function render NASA. It should grab the data that we're giving it, and then we need to output something to the body tag in the HTML. So we can say document query selector, yes, there we go, and body, which is the body tag. So now we'll change the inner HTML of that body tag. We'll set that to be equal to something new. Use accent graphs again, because then we can have easy access to variables and can lay out our HTML. But I want to put in an image tag. So image and the source should be something from our data and the alt tag should be something else. Let's call it uh, a part astronomical picture of the day. And the source for the image. Well, let's go see. We've got object and we've got URL. So that would be the, the name of our object is data, so we'll start off with data. Dollar sign curly brackets because we want to put in a variable. Data dot URL. That should be it. Uh, and we're calling the get data NASA function here, and that function is calling the render NASA function when it's ready. So let's see if it works. It does. There's a pic there's a picture. Nice. Um what else do we get from this? Um let's uh output the console log again. Title. Title would be a good one, right? So let's put that in an H1. H1 and I'm kind of lazy this way, so I'll just copy this and say title. So now we should have an H1 above it, yes. And this changes from day to day, so you probably won't have a moon dressed like Saturn. You will have something else here, right? And yeah. Alright, so if if you look at your assignment of the NASA astronomical picture of the day, this is pretty much it, right? Yes. So uh, build a website that shows this. Alright, good. Um, let's see if we can uh, get through to Wikipedia instead. Um, yeah. Let's comment this stuff out so we don't mess about with that. So we'll just write some code up here instead. Or maybe you should uh, no, you should have the 
you should type this in, right? So so pause the video, type this in and make sure that it works. If it doesn't work, check your console, check your console anyway to see what's there. And then uh, fix the errors if, there, if you're missing anything or have a good look and it should be like this, then it should work. All right, just uh, go ahead and pause the video and do that. All right, so let's uh, let's get on with the uh, with the Wikipedia bit. Um, I'll create a new function uh, called get data wiki, and in this case, uh, the function needs to output something different uh, every time because we want it to to react to a search term. So let's uh, add a variable called search term. Not a variable, a parameter. Sorry, uh, but it is a variable inside of the function now that we have defined it. And again, we need to start off with a constant that is uh, x HTTP, and we need to set that to XML HTTP request, and that's a new one of the of the kind. There we go. Um, all right, so let's set up the on ready state change x http uh, dot on ready state change um, that is equal to a function and in here we want again to check if uh, this ready state is equal to 4 and the status is equal to 200 so if this ready state is equal to 4 and this status is equal to 200 then we do something and it should be why should it be two equal signs here and not just one because one equal sign is assigning a value two equal signs is testing a value and I'm not making it three three uh, equal signs because I don't want to check the type as well, because this might be returned as a string actually, um, the 200. So, so I'm just leaving it as it is. All right. Then we want to create our data variable. So let's uh, do a constant uh, called data and set that to be equal to the JSON pass of the response text of this. So in this way, we have uh, our our XML HTTP request object and that we're checking states on. And when we're done with that, we take the same object and pull out the response text from it and pass it as JSON. And pa pass pass that not pass, but pass it uh, p a double s uh, to the data variable. So now we should be able to to uh, I'll put this to the console log console dot log data. But again, uh, we're just uh, writing the unready state change. We haven't told it where to go and to send it actually. So so let's write the address on the envelope here. Um, x http open uh, and down here we need to set which method to use. In this case it's get and the address for it is uh, let's see we have wiki URL up here uh, which is uh, most of it and you can see it ends with uh, sr search is equal to so we can put the search term afterwards. So we'll just put wiki URL in there. Um, where are we? We're here. Wiki URL, and then we need to add uh, the search term as well. So we'll do that. Search term. All right. And the search term is whatever we put as a parameter when we call the the function. Now we have uh, written an address, uh, we can set this to true, we want it to be asynchronous, and we can put in the address. 
sorry, we have put in the address and now we want to send it. This should result in us getting uh, the response data as a JSON object in, in console. Let's see what happens. Nothing. Why? Because I haven't called this function anywhere. So let's do that. Uh, let's say get data wiki and search for David Brayton. Alright, let's see what turns up. Alright, we have something in console now. So we can see there's uh, one here called query and if we extend that we can see there's search info which is information about how many articles fit the, the search. And then we have the first 20 articles here, uh, like a short description of them, right? So this could make an excellent list of articles uh, that we could click on or whatever to to get a res to to f you know show the uh, article itself. Okay. Uh, type this in. Make sure that it works. You can pause now. What I'm doing here is I'm uh, I'm trying something out. I'm gonna do results and let that be equal to data dot query dot search, which is should be an array of uh, the twenty results that we find. So if we do this uh, result is lesser than length, plus if i is smaller than result length and i++ plus plus. we're doing kind of a list here so let's see console doc results results uh, the one we're currently at and then title Now we should get a list of the titles, which we don't. Data is not defined. Let's see. Where are we at? Oh. I'm at the wrong place. There we go. This is better. So we've got these results uh, and can output those. Good. Feel free to pause now and uh, add this to your code. Okay, so. Um, so we're done for the day. Um, the next time we'll be doing a Wikipedia search uh, thing where we extend on our current API to Wikipedia, and that'll be that'll be fun. Um, but for now we're we're done. Um, I want you to use uh, five minutes uh, to reflect in your groups, uh, do that virtually, uh, and uh, figure out what you've learned and what you can use it for professionally and in your pro project work, etc. And uh, afterwards, uh, take two minutes to write a few lines. And remember to archive your stuff in your work portfolio um, so that you've got it for later. And that's it. Uh, thank you for today. It's been fun. Um, I'll find some way for you guys to be able to ask me questions about this stuff. Um, okay. Bye.